lots of people, Dobbs Wars is right here, and welcome to another episode of the Top 5s, or Top 10s if you want to class them. So last time we went ahead and talked about the Top 10, my Top 10 favourite controllers of all time on the consoles, but now it talk about the ones that I dislike, or not a fan of them, or I really hate them. Now, like I said, hate is a very strong word because hate means that you'd never use it ever again. But I still try and use these things, so I just don't like Houston because I just think they're just a very, very poor item that they made. So yeah, I've picked f my five here that I've got in my collection. Some of them are quite um, hard to come by. One of them, to be honest, which means my it's actually going to be my um, possibly my number two spot. Maybe I'm not I'm not sure yet, but I'm trying to think in my head as I go along. But let's get it started with number five. is the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. They suck, okay? I know a lot of people may like these, and sadly for me, I don't want to buy myself a Pro Controller because I the Nintendo Switch should be played like this. And, of course, if you guys have gone ahead and got yourself a Nintendo Switch Lite, you guys probably understand. They drift a lot. Um, luckily for me, I fix these all day long. They, it's just pretty much easy compressed air issue because you've got debris underneath, because, of course, with us, with our skin, our skin particles, it goes underneath them. It's just that without this, and you have this, they're tiny. And yeah, it's very mapped out easily to go ahead and do stuff, but it's good for like young kids, like probably 10 year olds at most. But when you're a full grown man or full grown woman and you don't have small hands anymore, this is a freaking nightmare. I know a lot of people have gone ahead and bin these controllers or put them away somewhere safe and replaced them with the Pro Controllers. Fair dues, well done to you guys. But when you get these officially on release day, you're stuck with them. Unless you've got more money to spend, you go ahead and get the Pro Controller. I never bought one. I stuck with these and I'm still, I'm still getting used to it. I just know that they're not amazing. And they, did, they do run out of battery very, very quickly. I can probably get around about 8 hours of battery of this when I'm watching YouTube, but they do deplete when I'm watching YouTube for some weird reason. When I'm playing games, they last for quite some time, but for some weird reason when I'm watching streaming systems or watching YouTube, they deplete very quickly. I don't get it. But yeah, that's my number 5 spot. It's just because they're very, very small and they're, they're, not very, they're not very comfortable unless I'm using it like this. Number four, it's got to be the original Xbox controller, also known as the freaking Duke. This thing is horrible. Oh my god. Now, from a very small controller to a big fuck off fat one. Now, I know this was their very, very first controller, but they know they messed up because people complained and they agreed. So they went ahead and made the new one, which was the Xbox original S controller, which is what we see nowadays for the modern Xbox controllers. They got it from that. And then they go ahead and re-release this son of a bitch for the Xbox series called the 20th Anniversary Editions. And still people hated it. The only thing that was good about it is that you got a hologram control, a hologram module where the xbox part is which looks amazing but guess what they drift as well that's the modern versions these ones don't drift i've never had an issue with these drifting ever at all but the one thing i hate about this is that it's too freaking big i'm trying to move my arm to get to the the start and the select button same thing with the other side but they're mapped out too far out i don't like it it's not very good the back pedals are great they're they're perfect but it's too freaking big for what it is i know they mapped them out so you get your thumbs and everything but it's not comfy you have to move your, your whole hand to get to that bit the other thing that's good for this thing is house of the dead the rail shooter games uh silent hill is really good for this as well but other games like um primal rage you're not gonna have a good good time or Dino Crisis as well. Dino Crisis on this is freaking horrible. Um, other games as well. Halo. 
This is not good for Halo. It's not. It's terrible. It's good for Burnout as well. I can give you that. It's good for Burnout. But anything else, I just go ahead and get yourself the Xbox Original S controller, which is a lot, lot easier. It's ten times as comfier, and it's a lot more um, doable as well. This thing is too big, and it should be locked away forever in the archives of Xbox. Number three. I love the console. Don't have a lot of games for it. But the controller is a piece of shit. It's the Dreamcast controller. This thing goggles balls. This thing is, is so freaking bad. I just don't get it, really. Let me take the memory card slots out just so you can see it better in full. So here it is. Now... The feel of it is good. One thing about it though, they have the wire underneath. Now they did fix that up and having the clock part to connect it there. But most of the time, why don't you just put the thing on the top? Of course they did because they had the memory card slots here. But why did you put the memory cards in the console? Jesus man, it's ridiculous. And this came out the same time as the PlayStation, where PlayStation knew they were onto something. But luckily for them, they must have had copyright claims on it. So they went ahead and put the memory card and the rumble packs on the controller. Why? This is stupid. And it makes it heavier as well. So the bomb part is extremely light. But when you go ahead and put the memory card stuff on top of it, it's extremely heavy and you go in it like that. Now, what do I think about the buttons and everything? Bad pedals. They're very, very good. Resilient. The feeling feels good. Except for that bottom bit. It's too deep. I want it to be a bit more, like, rounded. So you can actually cup it with your hand. Not, like, clawing it. It's a bit weird. The analog stick is perfect. This is the analog stick that we all want. This reminds me of the old... Um, Dell Windows controllers that you used to have for your PC. This is a good controller dual stick. This is a problem. The D the um, D, D pad needs to be changed. This is horrible. The starboard is okay, but for some reason, a lot of Dreamcast controllers do tend to break because of the freaking start button. Luckily, I've got four of these controllers, and only two of them have that issue. The other two work perfectly fine. This is one of them that works perfectly fine. And again, these ones, they work perfectly fine. But it's just super annoying that this is all they got. I know it looks futuristic and Sega was trying to do it. But like, like I said, possibly this was the t day when Sega actually did die for their consoles. And possibly in the near future we may see it again. And we probably will see this freaking controller ever again as well. When it comes to the Sega Dreamcast Mini. If we actually are going to be getting that. And will I be getting it? Sure I will be getting it as well. But yeah. This thing is freaking horrible. And to be honest. I don't play as much as the Dreamcast as I used to. But I rarely use this controller nowadays. Unless I'm using it for save files. Because I will change it. To a third party controller. Where it actually is very, very, very good. It looks exactly like this, but they've changed the layout, which is a lot nicer. Number two. This is a big one. And it's a very expensive one. I could be glad to have this thing. But holy shit. I would not use it for anything. This thing, I will never play with it. Because... It's a fucking ball ache! This is the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller. This came out for the GameCube and the PlayStation. Let's crack it open. This thing came out as a deluxe edition slash collector's edition if you pre-ordered Resident Evil 4. Now, this thing... Is your star button. Oh yeah, that's great, isn't it, Dobsy, isn't it? But look at this, okay? Look, right. 
I'm turning it for you, people, yeah? L2 is here. R2 is here. What? R1 is there. Okay, you follow him there. Where's the other buttons? Ah, there's one over here, which is the um, L1 button. This is fucking horrible already. And then your D-pad is here. Your, your analog sticks are here. Your buttons are here. This is terribly made. It's not terribly made. It looks amazing. But the mapping of the pa of the controllers, the buttons, is a horrible. Do you know thing that looks good? Is that the start button is like that. Now, as you guys know, there's no batteries in this because I didn't want this to get battery acid in it. But also... To connect this to your console, you put the wire underneath. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? This is... It's shit, okay? It is the most gimmick thing I have ever seen on a PlayStation or on a GameCube. I do have another one like this, but this could actually be worked for all games. This works on every game I've ever played. I've played it on so many other games. I've played it on Street Fighter. I've played it on other Resident Evils. I've played it on Fatal Frame. I've played it on um, uh, Michigan from Hell. I've even tried it on the freaking Rule of Rose pirate copy disc I've got with me. It fucking sucks. It's terrible. It is the worst controller I've ever held ever. But it looks amazing, okay? It looks amazing. And that's the thing I love about it. This is why it's not number two. If this looked terrible and it looked cheap, it would be number one all over. But it, what saves it is because it's a Resident Evil controller. It looks like a chainsaw from um, Dr. Salvador from Resident Evil 4. And this is quite cool. Looking like you're revving up the chain. But it's just the mapping is absolutely atrocious, and the way it pl and the way you have to work it is fucking atrocious. And it's now going back in here where it originally was. That's my number two spot. But what is number one? It's that big fucker. Oh my god, this thing is shit. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, Dobsy, it's the Wii U's controller. Of course it's crap. You can go ahead and get yourself a Pro Controller or just use the Wii controllers, like you said. But when you got this as your base controller, this thing is huge. Now, yes, we can thank Nintendo for this because this is like the beta part to get the Nintendo Switch because you take these off, it's the Joy-Cons. Okay? I get that. But what's the worst thing about this, though? The screen is shit. You do get a stylus, which is like for the Nintendo DS thing. But the screen can easily get damaged very quickly. The speakers are quite nice. But the one thing about this, though, it's not comfy at all. And now, of course, yes, this is... A lot of people are thinking, obviously, this is the thing. This was the, this was the part that was good about it. If your family have one TV and you want to play your games, they can watch TV and then all you need to do is look down like you're playing. That's easily said than done. But there's so many games out there that don't do that. Like Zombie U. You have yourself like the Dynasty Warriors games. That didn't work. You had some horror games that I wanted to play like um, um, Fatal Frame Maiden and Blackwater. It didn't work on the screen. It was not very good. You were used it to censor stuff. That's all you were doing, like, you're doing it as a camera, but that was it, it was horrible. Um, the only things I liked about this game, this, 4, was the Zelda games. The Zelda games were fantastic, okay? Um, the Mario games were awesome. Uh, Bayonetta was fantastic, we loved it on this. Pretty much all the Nintendo release games worked very well with it, but anything that was not really licensed, well, that was licensed by Nintendo, but not made by them, didn't do well. And let me get me started as well. The battery on this thing is fucking shy. One hour. That's all I get from this thing. One hour of battery life. And then I have to put it back on its holster. And let it charge itself up. It is horrible. 
Now, a lot of people are thinking it should be an hour. It sh it's probably because your battery's fucked. It's always been an hour since I first got it. And I got this thing brand new on Black Friday in Tesco's back in 2014, 13, somewhere about there. I I bought it because I, I knew the console was going to be a rare item. And I, it still is. A lot of the games are extremely rare. And I do own a lot of them. But for the controller though, it's a piece of shit. I wouldn't recommend you guys playing it with this thing. I just go ahead and swap it over to a Nintendo Wii controller. Or of course, a Pro controller. That's what I choose. But yeah, that is my choices. So yeah, you got yourself the Switch. You got yourself the Wii U, Xbox Duke, the Dreamcast. And that god-awful chainsaw for Resident Evil 4. That is just good for show and tell, but not good for playing with. Hope you guys agree with me. If you guys disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. Please leave in the comments down below on what you think are the worst controllers that you ever, ever used. And can't really describe on how bad they were. Let me know in the comments down below, because I'd love to hear from you. With that being said, the people of Sleek will see you guys subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio! What a piece of history, but holy hell, that is a piece of shit.